We're joined in Washington by uh, my colleague, former colleague at the Wall Street Journal, now the president of the Pew Research Center, Alan Murray. Alan, really glad to have you back on WSJ.com. Good to be here. And uh, David Stockman, former budget director in the Reagan White House, a guy who's been through a few of these State of the Union addresses, is with me here in New York. David, good to see you. Glad to be here. Alan, let me start with you. Um, what did you hear that struck you as being surprising or different, if anything? Well, I don't think I w it was terribly surprising. Look, I, I think first and foremost, he focused on the issues that our polls show the American people really care about. He talked about the economy. He talked about jobs and measures and measures to uh, create more jobs. So in that sense, he was very much in tune with the American people. Also talked, of course, about raising the minimum wage and extending unemployment benefits. And those are also fairly popular measures uh, uh, with the people. You pointed out, Jerry, that he did talk about uh, inequality deepening, but I have to say I was a little surprised about how quickly he moved beyond that. That's a more divisive topic. That's one that divides Republicans and Democrats because many Republicans think the focus on inequality can be counterproductive. I didn't think he spent that much time on that. I thought it was a quick mention and moved on, contrary to some of the press that we heard prior to the speech. Well, that's true. And David Stockman, you know, there, there is income inequality in the U.S. There's also a question about whether the government can or should really do anything about that. Um, is that maybe one of the reasons that we've moved on beyond that tonight already? Well, I think also, ironically, there's a question of what's the major agency today that's causing the uh, income inequality to increase in the wealth uh, mm. inequality. And I think it's clearly the policy of the Fed mm -hmm. and zero interest rates and crushing savers and the incentive it gives to speculation and the 1% and the Wall Street hedge funds and so forth. Now that's something he could do something about because the president appoints the next chairman yeah. of the Fed, the last one, uh, and, and what has he done? He's appointed basically wealth affects people who I believe are conducting policies that are making these issues worse. Now most of the speech was ritualized rhetoric. Mm -hmm. It was well delivered, but it was content free. Immigration reform is important. It's something Congress can do something about. It was one paragraph. One, well, not even know. a paragraph, uh, I think half a paragraph. The yeah. Raising the minimum wage yeah. is a terrible idea. The House at least knows that. Uh, and yet uh, he had to demagogue that issue because it sounds good with the public. Uh, so, you know, I uh, think this well, was probably the worst <laughs> State of the Union address he's given yet. Uh, but uh, I think we're at the point where there really isn't much that government can do about these huge economic and job problems yeah. facing the country. Well, uh, Alan, before I come back to you, you know, you know David's talking about the focus on, on workers in the middle class. And, and you know, every State of the Union speech is, at some, to some extent, uh, an homage to the middle class. Let's, let's hear a part of what the president said on that subject. Our job is to reverse these trends. It won't happen right away, and we won't agree on everything. But what I offer tonight is a set of concrete, practical proposals to speed up growth, strengthen the middle class, and build new ladders of opportunity into the middle class. Were there so, Alan, were there concrete proposals there to deal with closing the gaps in income in America? Well, I, I don't, I mean, he, uh, as we've already talked about, he talked about raising the minimum wage. He talked about extending unemployment benefits, sort of increasing the safety net. Um, he talked some about education, uh, uh, and he talked about uh, corporate tax reform, which could uh, arguably have an effect on creating jobs. So, yeah, I think there were some, some specific things. But again, I don't think he focused a lot on closing the gap, which is mm. a somewhat different matter. And, Jerry, uh, let me raise another issue that, uh, you know, when you think about how much time over the last few years has been spent on, on the issue of the budget deficit, very little in this speech about the budget deficit. That issue seems to have moved to a back burner, and, and we see that in our polls as well. The American public less concerned about, uh, about the budget deficit than it's been in past years. That, that's a good point, and, and David, I want to pick up there, but first let me remind people that Washington State Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers is going to give the Republican response to the State of the Union in a few minutes, and when that happens, we'll turn to her. But uh, it is true that the deficit isn't the boogeyman it was a couple of years ago. It hasn't slipped off the radar screen in Washington, but this speech tonight was a pretty good indication 
it's lower down. It's, it's, a, it's, it's dropping. There's a kind of a school of thought that the, the Washington has spent too much time worrying about cutting the deficit, deficits over the last few years to, uh, at a cost to the real economy. Uh, are, is that right? And is no, it I think that's totally wrong. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's the elephant in the room that wasn't acknowledged. Usually the State of the Union address in my day had list after list after list of what uh, Johnson was going to do, Nixon was going to do, uh, even Reagan for the American economy. There was almost no list in here because the federal government is broke. Now the deficit is only seven or eight hundred billion, but we're five years into this recovery. Yeah. Sooner or later there will be a recession, the deficit will soar again. People in Washington know that. That's why there's no laundry list of new spending, new tax uh, giveaways and so forth. And yet uh, that's the only thing that really would probably impact the economy. But, but in, in right a way that, that's it. kind of a strange sign of success, I guess, for a Republican agenda. I mean, back in the day, uh, yeah. uh, people thought that people the, in the Ronald Reagan world thought if you starved the government of revenue to start new social programs, that that process would stop. That's kind of where we are. Alan, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, Jerry, I think it was a modest agenda. He was not... Uh, he was look. Remember what happened last year. You know, we had a, a lot of uh, uh, talk about immigration reform, a lot of talk about gun control, and nothing happened. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it seems that the White House made a conscious decision here not to put a whole bunch of things on the table that they had no chance of getting, and not to uh, uh, not to pick big fights that were going to lead to gridlock. So you didn't hear a lot of that in this speech relatively modest proposals. You know, when he talks about going to American corporations and asking them to try yeah. harder to hire the long-term unemployed, well, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's great, that's a good thing, but it's not a, uh, it's not a big initiative and it's gonna be difficult to measure its success. Yeah, you know, that's true. Uh, David, I did a, a column in the Journal today and I said we're sort of in the era of small ball in Washington. Right. That's the reality of the, the fiscal condition of the country uh, and, and the federal government by we're extension. We're also in a condition of partisan paralysis uh, right. as to what the options are. None of this could get through the House and that's why he didn't have a, a list. Uh, and frankly, uh, there is huge difference about whether you should extend unemployment benefits. There's a case against it. Whether you should raise the minimum wage, there's a huge case against it. Uh, obviously, uh, we need to be addressing the deficit, but no one thinks that it's urgent at the moment. So I think government is basically, uh, you know, on automatic pilot. Uh, there will be a lot of political posturing and maneuvering, uh, you know, getting prepared for the two uh, 14 elections. But nothing happened in 2013, an off year, and it's virtually certain that no agenda could be adopted now. And but, but Jerry, let yeah, me, let, let's just be clear about this. There is a, a, an intellectual case to be made against raising the minimum wage and an intellectual case against extending unemployment insurance, but they are popular items. Yeah. Our, our poll shows 73% of the American public favors a, a, a modest increase in the minimum wage. 63% of the American public favors extending uh, unemployment benefits. So in, in calling out those yeah. things, the president is, is, is playing to the public.